We have not received court judgment on Umahi, says Ainek. And the confusion rocks Oshun State PDP as Adeleke and Babayemi emerge as candidates. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Kong. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has said it was yet to be served the certificate copy of the Federal High Court that sacked Governor Dave Umahi of Eboin State and his deputy, Chief Kelechi Igwe. Justice Iyang Eko of the Federal High Court, Abuja, opened a new vista in Nigeria's political landscape by ordering the governor of Eboin State, Dave Umahi, and his deputy, Kelechi Igwe, to vacate their offices for defecting from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the All Progressive Congress, APC. Well, joining us to break this down is political analyst Charles Otu and uh, publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party in Eboin State, Mwaba Chika. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for hosting us, too. Yes. Um, Mr. Chika, I want to start with you. Um, the PDP had, had said in several, on several occasions uh, uh, and, and similar cases that they were going to take issues of defection to court. And I can mention a couple. Um, we also have Zamfara. We have Cross River, which is one of the most recent. Um, but then INEC is saying, as of today, as of yesterday, or uh, Early um, yesterday, people had started talking about the fact that the court had sacked uh, the governor and his deputy and even members of the legislature. Um, this, of course, is, like I said in the beginning, it's a, a new opening in our judiciary system, uh, in our judicial system. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on the court judgment. Oh, thank you. Uh, the court judgment. I think you can hear me, right? Yes. The court judgment came to us as a party and as citizens of Ebony State. It came to us, it didn't come to us as a surprise because uh, we knew that the judiciary would uh, you know, give fair judgment because it is very, very bad you know, for a political party to labor and elect a candidate to run an election, then afterwards, that candidate now leaves that political party for another. It is very bad. So when we received the news that uh, the, the Federal High Court, you know, has uh, um, uh, given us judgment in our favor, so we saw it, you know, we saw it as, as good development because our, this is the first time in the history of um, of uh, our democracy that the sitting governor could be removed in this manner. So it came to us as very good information and news. So if you were in a boy state yesterday, you would notice that everybody, virtually everybody in a boy was celebrating it. People were gathering... Uh, at, uh, uh, at Beer Palace, gathering at uh, 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 squares, you know, celebrating that victory. So, primarily, Ebony is a PDP state. Now, leaving, leaving us for APC is just like, uh, you know, leaving your good house for a taxed one. So, PDP received that news and we are very, very happy, and the people are very happy, and I believe, too, that everyone in Nigeria feels happy for that judgment. Mm. So it came to us as a as, as, as good thing. So we are celebrating it, we are still celebrating it, and the Nigerians are joining us in their different uh, locations to celebrate that victory. So it is a victory for democracy. It is a victory for justice and victory for fair Politicking. Thank you. Interesting. Let, let's, let's look at what INEC is saying today. INEC has said that they're yet to receive this court judgment. You know, and in that regard, they cannot necessarily act on anything, being that 
uh, until the, the judgment is transmitted to them, they will not be able to um, recognize any other person. But I want to ask, because you're a member of the PDP, before I go to O2, um, why is the PDP nominating Iguariwe as governor and Udogu as deputy? Um, why the hurry to put these people in place if the modus operandi has not been followed in terms of, um, you know, what INEC is saying and all the due processes that have to take place? Um, there is nothing like uh, being in a hurry, you know, to nominate a governorship um, candidate for our party. You know, if you if you went through the the judgment, you could find out. You know, you could find out that the judge said that PDP should nominate governorship and deputy governorship candidates immediately, and that the state governor should vacate alongside uh, his uh, deputy. So. There's nothing, you know, uh, 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 so uh, questionable about it. Mm -hmm. PDP acted in line with what the court said. Now, um, Idui Garriwe, Honorable Idui Garriwe, has been a local government chairman. He has been contesting elections, senatorial elections, and so on. And presently, he's a two-time member of the House of Representatives. So... You know, we felt that Idu Gariwe, you know, having played politics since 1999, having played upon politics since 1999, so he has the requisite uh, knowledge, political knowledge and leadership acumen to carry on the responsibility of governing a point state. Then Chief Frederick Udogo, on the other hand, has been a House of Assembly member in the old Enugu self Assembly. Mm -hmm. And um, he has been a chairman of local government, commissioner. He has been a commissioner for like 12 years. He, has, he was the immediate past caretaker chairman of PDP in Ebony State. So you could now understand that these two persons, these two personalities, have what it takes to take Ebony to the next level. So there was nothing like, uh, you know, we, we had... We hurried, so we just did what the court said we should do. Again, uh, I don't. This morning, I had to communicate um, our party in Abuja to know if if uh, they have transmitted uh, the, the the court ruling uh, document to to INET. And the person I reached told me that uh, everything had been put in place. So it is. Uh, I, I am surprised to hear it from you that. Uh, INEC is still saying that um, they, are, they are yet to receive the document. So the contact I made. I think that we lost you there, um, Chika, but let me go to Otu. Otu, you are a political analyst. You are looking at this from the outside. Um, let's take a look at the personality of the governor in, in, um, as a person. Let's look at the reasons with, for which the governor said he left the PDP for the APC. I'm sure that when the governor was defecting, he had press briefings and press conferences. He gave his reasons for why he left the APC, the PDP for the APC. Um, and looking at the governor's, you know, um, the, the landmark achievements, if there be any, um, his movement from the PDP to the APC, has it one way or the other affected his um, mode of leadership or how he has um, progressed in the state. Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, uh, first of all, is that uh, since November 17th, precisely in 2020, when the governor defected to uh, the ruling of Progressive Congress, uh, uh, nothing particularly has changed about his leadership style, uh, except that uh, a lot of persons, he, you know, he moved into a bigger ocean. That is a bigger ocean is the ruling party. So he became more of um, he became more in the public view. You know, people were beginning to question, to ask, oh, who is this man that could abandon the house he has built? The house that made him, for instance, a chairman of a party of the PDP, made him a substantive an acting chairman in the first instance, later on a substantive chairman, and uh, that was capped with the deputy governorship of uh, the state, still under the same party. So, uh, uh, summarily, there was nothing that shared about the governor's style or disposition of uh, 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 David Omai. What changed rather was that he became more 
noticeable. It became more known. So uh, what you see, and you see, people celebrate as achievements, say, unprecedented, as they use the word, uh, developments in Ebony, uh, nothing but uh, what some of us consider as a, a mirage. Because you, 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 if you go through the media yesterday and see the, the reactions of people all over the place regarding the judgment, uh, you would not but agree with the fact that um, the people are not with him. How can the people be with you when people gave you 393,000 and you dumped the people in the manner and order you did and you just think you can move on to another party without consideration? So I mean, Charles, I'm, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to cut in, but I'm most interested in when you say people gave him the vote. On the ballot paper, what we see is the political parties and not necessarily the pictures of the people who are running for the office, which is another kettle of fish on its own. But the people, were they really voting for Omahi or were they voting for the party? Because this is where the question lies. And this is where the court cases uh, are either won or lost. So yes, people may have been voting for Omahi, but they were voting for the PDP on that ballot paper, even though he has moved to the APC. So again, there's a question mark every time people say, well, we voted for you. Did you really vote for the governor or were they voting for the party? Well, th thank you very much. Uh, and the, that is why I love what Justice Epo has done. Justice Yang Epo has successfully set the tone for the contextual debates on the content and the imports the import and content of I will even say interpretation of the true import of Section 221 of the 1999 Constitution. Because that, that, that law is simple, that a, a candidate of a party in an election cannot canvass for vote on his own. There are, uh, it, it will interest you to know that there are lots of persons who, because of the other candidates in that election, including somebody like that, my brother, for instance, that will do that way, because he's in PDP, people can... People People will say vote PDP at all levels. And you know, it has been a traditional PDP state. So for a state that has been traditionally a PDP state, there is that inclination that the battle for the primary ticket of the party is always more intense, more fierce. In fact, before 20, before even this time, if you have a PDP ticket, you are good to go. You are as good as having won the election. You know, you are good, as good as having won an election because there was basically before now no form of opposition whatsoever to PDP in the state. So for those who are thinking or presuming that people voted the personality of the governor, some of these citizens of uh, the governor, some of these citizens of the governor is well known to the people of Ebony State that even as a deputy governor, he manifested most of them. There is nothing democratic about him. He has been a, a, a full-blown dictator since the, his time as a, since his time as a party chairman. He could literally carry a ticket of a party and hand over to another person who did not even appear. So, in but, but 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 the but the, but the party the knew. I mean, these things you're saying this as a, you know a person. But if the party knew that he was dictatorial, why give him the ticket? If people saw that he was dictatorial, why did the members of that political party not push for another person to be given that ticket? Why are we having this conversation now? Uh, it will it will interest you to know that nobody, not not even the PDP on their own, gave Governor Mahi the ticket even in 2015. Professor Yebuchichu could be Minister of Health if you follow the trajectory of a point political history. You will agree that Professor Yebuchichu was the person, the former governor, uh, Martin Elishi, his boss, wanted yes. to hand over to. And Martin Elishi won the point and substantial about the character of David Omahi. In many publications, which I can produce the links to you, he said he cannot hand over to someone who is intolerant of opposing views. That he has not his deputy for the past four years that worked closely, and he's not worthy and fit. But to be yet the, governor the of man the was now, given the, the ticket. The yet governor, he merged the, the governor of the state. Right. With all of these things that you're saying, <laughs> yet <laughs> the man was given that <laughs> ticket. He was made the governor <laughs> of a state, and here we are crying <laughs> foul. People didn't choose to elect to my on their own, even in 2015. What people did in 2015 was simply to say, oh, where else do we bend our hands? Some bad, uh, some bad backwards to vote for him as the only survey candidate because there was a clamor for power to shift to a point south, where I come from, where the governor comes from. After eight years in the north, eight years in the central. So some people bent backwards to do that. And because they're not felt okay, if we vote in another person, we spend another eight years, they repeat out the same mistake of voting him again in 2019. Yeah. So uh, it is not as if Umayyad has ever been loved by Bonyans. 
If you come to the, if you want to assess what I'm telling you, go to the place they call international market. Ask the average market woman that is wiped with whips every day and tax to pay 200 naira per day or 500 naira per thousand sent by the governor. You will agree with me that he's unpopular. Mm. He's as unpopular as his policies in Ebony. Okay. And it's as simple as that. I, I want to take us to the reaction of Governor David Umahi to the court um, uh, judgment. And then, of course, when I come back, I'm going to uh, get uh, Chika's response. Any hatchet man to remove a governor. There are three ways whereby a governor can vacate his seat. It's either by vet resignation or impeachment by the House of Assembly. There is no any other constitutional provision that empowers a hatchet man to turn the Constitution and the law upside down. I've listened to the judgment of uh, Eko, and it's very obvious that he was on a mission he was making all efforts to uh, obtain the rulings of the Supreme Court and appeal courts on issues like this. We have had the rumors before now that he was determined to give judgment against all known laws and the Constitution, first to embarrass APC, two to embarrass the federal government. Uh, for me, I do not feel worried, but I feel so sorry for the judiciary. The executives may have problems, the uh, legislature may have problems, but the moment uh, you know, justice could be purchased, then we are in trouble in this country. And the, the ruling this afternoon is a clear evidence that this country is in trouble. And let me tell you that this same judge has over 10 cases against a boy state government with him. And uh, you can imagine what is going to rule. We have petitioned him to NJC and we will follow it up at all costs to ensure that this man is brought to justice. I want you to disregard the judgment. It is null and void. There is a substituting judgment in Zamfara State. Well, um, Moba Chika, this, 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 uh, I'm going to ask you lots of questions on this, but I want to start by him mm. saying that this judgment was purchased. He starts by saying mm. that the judiciary, um, he's, he's questioning the, the judiciary. Uh, as we speak. He's also said that this judgment was purchased. I'm guessing that uh, he's saying that maybe the PDP had bought uh, uh, Justice Iyang Eko. And he's also said that there have been 10 cases against um, the Ebon state government by the same justice and, and that he, the government uh, has petitioned um, Justice Iyang Eko to the NJC. What are your thoughts? Okay, thank you so much. Um, his claim that... Uh that uh, the judge was uh, purchased by PDP. Um, you know, we are not surprised because he has been he has been talking like this. So if he claims, you know, that uh, PDP paid for the judgment, I think he has to produce the um, uh, the receipt. He need to produce the, the receipt that uh, PDP, you know, that um, uh, PDP used in buying uh, the judgment. Because uh, I don't, I don't see it as uh, as uh, as as uh, an achievable adventure. PDP in Ebony State is known for forthrightness. The former governor's claim that uh, we bought uh, the the judgment, you know, couldn't have come if that judgment favored him. If it had favored him, he wouldn't have made that kind of statement. Okay. The Constitution, I'm not a lawyer, but the Constitution is straight. Every vote uh, cannot by a candidate in an, uh, 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 in an election 
is owned by the political party and not that candidate since we don't our constitution doesn't um, uh, make provision for uh, um, uh, individuals running election on their own okay now look at what a governor is saying you see you know uh, 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 he just he just manifested what he does in Ebony, you know, to, uh, 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 to the national uh, audience. Yeah. How can a sitting governor say that uh, he's not going to obey a court ruling? That's what he has been doing in Ebony, and this is what he has been doing to the Ebony judiciary. Okay, let me bring yeah. Otu, let me bring Charles or two back in. Charles, the governor says he's not worried. Um, he's, he feels sorry for the judiciary. He says he feels that the country is in trouble. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, those views as expressed by the governor, uh, for me, the judiciary is not on trial. It is rather the conscience of Engineer uh, Omahi, the former governor, outside governor of Ebony, that is in trouble, that is in, on trial. Uh, you know what, it will surprise you to know that for the same judgment he's saying, calling Justice Seku a hatchet man and saying it was procured. The state government mobilized women and youth groups to Abuja, hoping the matter could have gone the other way. This is not the first time. We know him and his tactics very well. Those who pride their businesses in Ebony, you know, who pride their trades in Ebony, know him. In 2015, the tribunal dismissed all the evidences before it and that upheld his election. Same has he gotten. Interesting. Now, l let me talk about his presidential ambition. Don't forget that recently, um, the um, well, governor had come out to say that he wants to run for the presidency um, come 2023. He's one of the very first people from the Southeast who threw his hat which, into the ring. Has he gotten away with a lot of uh, uh, victories from the judiciary? Hello? I don't, know what I, I don't know if you're still there. We lost you for a second, but go ahead and, and end that thought okay, so I can okay. ask the question again. Okay, okay. The, the judiciary eh, has been uh, favoring him in his, in his body. How is it at this point in time that the governor has suddenly realized that he is going to choose the judgment to obey? Let me let it known to the world that the so-called uh, Justice Njoko's uh, uh, ruling in uh, a Bakleke High Court, which is calling a court of uh, coordinate jurisdiction. Of course, there are courts of coordinate jurisdiction. But the issue, the problem with that judgment is that the judge decided this matter within a space of less than three weeks. The PDP, who is a party to the matter, was, was not served. Roy Umahi, who is his uh, brother, was uh, the arbiter, was uh, the one handling the whole matter. And they thought by procuring that judgment and cordialing it before the judges in Abuja that Justice Seko will be cowed. Thank God for the, the courage and the tenacity of Justice Seko, who stood in the face of all the intimidations, all the harassments, even... They are more, I know, I'm sure that there are times must have been made by the governor, knowing who for he, him for who he is, to induce the judge. At the end of the day, the judge took a firm decision to stand for the truth. Okay, That's, finally, finally, because we're almost out of time, Mr. Otu, we're almost out of time, so I'll quickly ask this question so I can wrap up with um, Chika. Um, what now happens to the presidential ambition of Governor David Umahi? He has never been running for president in, in his true intent. What he's been running for is to remain relevant at the national scale, scale or space when eventually he leaves office in 2023. For, for, for those who... Charles, we're losing you, so I'm going to go to Ch Ch uh, Mwaba Chika now. Mwaba, finally, the PDP has somewhat won this case. Is the PDP going to proceed to other states like Zamfara, like uh, Cross River, um, to push those cases? Because, I mean, like I said at the beginning, the PDP had continuously said they were in court on this matter. Should we be looking out for judgments in that regard? With the matter. So uh, we have just um, won the matter at the first stage. So we are continuing with it. it is the governor, we got information that the governor has, uh, has appealed already. So we are going to follow it up, even to the Supreme Court. So, because it is our own mandate, our own mandate that was stolen. So we are very ready, we are very ready to go and reclaim it. 
And that's what uh, we are into already. So uh, there is no going back. Okay. We are going to reclaim that mandate. And the Boye people and Nigerians in general will be happy, you know, that we, uh, 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 that we are able to reclaim our mandate that was stolen. So um, we, are, we are waiting for the, you know, for the appeal court you know, to start doing the needful because uh, we are not going to draw, uh, we are not going to withdraw. All right. We well, I want to say, I want to say thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Unfortunately, the connections are really bad. But thank you. Charles Otu is a pop political analyst. And of course, um, Mobat Chika is the publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party in a boring state. We appreciate you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, two candidates emerged in Oshun State's PDP parallel primary election. Well, we'll get to find out after this break.